circular economy is an economy where there is no such thing as waste. It is materials which we value uh, for multiple uses throughout their lifetime before we reintroduce them back into the natural environment. What it isn't is a current model, which is linear, where we take, make, and dispose. In Scotland, we use about 8.2, 8.4 tonnes of materials a year per person. That's three times more than the world can sustain. Circular economy, if done right, can create jobs, create green, green jobs here in Scotland and reduce carbon. And because we're driving for things to last, it, sh it should and will improve the quality of our buildings and the usefulness of them and improve our lives. The commitment to transform for the sector was established in 2022. I think this is very much a starting point. It is a live um, plan. Construction itself, this is the sector that is going to be delivering net zero. The was it, National Farmers Union has said we need to eat less meat and we need to have fewer cows if we're going to save the planet. So why hasn't we asked and the Construction Leadership Forum and the National Federation of Builders and the Scottish Government said we need fewer buildings? And it isn't the reason for that but to do with our perceptions. We will see construction primarily as an economic activity. You know, construction equals consumption, equals growth, equals economy, equals jobs, equals turnover, equals financial security. Not construction equals uh, consumption equals destroying your futures. And so, you know, how we see construction as a sector and how the rest of our society sees construction is half the problem. <coughs> We do want a thriving economy, we do want skilled jobs, we do want employment, we do want wealth. So how do we detach those outcomes from using up the planet's resources, creating a lot of carbon and creating lots of toxic waste? We can't change uh, VAT levels on yeah. a kind of retrofit that would that's in the gift of the UK government and something that, of course, a lot of people push for and I think that would be the ideal change. It's, I, I suppose it's about showing the benefit because of course the way government thinks is cost. Hey, I'm losing all that money. But you're also gaining a lot uh, with taxation from the people doing the jobs. The actual, there would be an explosion of work, like a big boost to the economy. I hope I have spent my career pushing stuff around the reuse of existing buildings, retrofitting buildings, retrofitting communities, um, really the use of our existing towns, making them work better, all the infrastructure, all the carbons there. I've been campaigning since 2003 for the um, madness of VAT being applied at 20% to retrofit of homes and at 0% uh, for new build to be levelled and in a way I think it would be quite interesting if it was reversed. Rather than trying to create new things, how do we make better use of what we have? If we're talking about retrofit, it's, it's one thing about retrofitting buildings, it's also retrofitting systems and making better use of the things that we have and the design of the things that we have. So we've been retrofitting two buildings in North Glasgow, both are old industrial buildings um, and our ambition has been to take those as case studies of how to retrofit post-industrial buildings to create a prototype of um, these amazing old spaces to become energy positive. Glasgow has an abundance of old industrial spaces that have been sitting empty for years. And our motivation has been to sort of demonstrate that these old buildings that used to be the driver of economic growth um, through the industrial revolution that created a huge amount of waste and pollution that's led to where we are now with the climate 
um, imperative how we can retrofit these buildings to create spaces for the new green economies of the future. Post-industrial cities of Scotland has this abundance of space that is of really, really rich social, cultural her heritage. If we don't make use of them, then they get lost. Like historically, the motivation for re regeneration projects has often been just demolishing large areas of the city. Um, so the idea that we can retrofit them to become efficient, beautiful spaces, and also hopefully generating more energy than they consume in that process means that then we're making them fit for the next 100 years, but also keeping that heritage in the city that I think is so important for the stories we tell about change and what, what change can be. There are nearly 44,000 six month plus long term empty homes in Scotland. That's a terrifying number. That doesn't even count all the homes, all the empty flats above our shops in the high street. I was uh, in the centre of Falkirk last week and I could count 50 just from the one point. There are hundreds in the centre of Perth, just in two main shopping streets. There's probably the same again in terms of Scotland in, in general. So that's 100,000 possibly empty homes and flats. And that's against 20,000 a year new build, the Diddy boxes uh, that we seem to accept as being the one way forward. I know housing associations that would love to innerfit, retrofit. It's cheaper to do that and good existing stock, but the, the financial modeling they get forces them to knock them down because they can get more money for build back better, it's called. The building industry has done this deliberately the word that I can repeat to you that they use at the heart of government to describe the, um, the agreement between government and the building industry is deal flow. The greenest home, the eco home, is the one already built. Kinetec Brick, wonderful product, any architect in the room, put it in your buildings. It's a perfect example of valuing the materials that we have in our industry and repurposing them for a high value product. Kinetec, we are at the forefront of delivering ultra low carbon products. Um, we have our first product, the K-Brick, which is made almost entirely from recycled construction and demolition waste and is not fired like a traditional clay brick and does not use virgin cement like a concrete brick would. When you're comparing it to clay, Traditional clay fired bricks, for instance, we're under 5% of the embodied carbon. What that then means is it, it impacts very, very positively on a project's embodied carbon targets um, and indeed those mandates for public sector buildings now across Scotland. It can be taken, covered in Scotland and locally manufactured into a brick, creating local jobs and local economic benefits for the, for the community and for Scotland. Across the, the globe, we need products like this to bring down that, that uh, impact from embodied carbon. The hub idea actually is a good idea, I think, okay. definitely. Yep. This idea of storing secondary materials so that yeah. other people can use them. I mean, there are a few salvage places, but there's not a lot, and there's certainly nothing on any kind of scale the whole business could arise. Yeah, uh, the whole ecosystem. Yeah, but maybe we have to have hubs that are by material, if you know what I mean. Yeah, so that, okay. that metals are all go to there, glass all goes there, whatever. It's kind of a mindset issue, which is a bit skewed and wrong at the moment, isn't it, today? Yeah. Where, where everyone wants something new and shiny, and the idea of reusing something and or, actually, or, or valuing what we have is kind of thrown aside. If we could help people understand that these things actually have a value. Mm -hmm. you know? I think it's scale as well, Sam, because it, there's a perception that it's too difficult to do things because it's all small scale and collecting everything. I deal with a company in Toronto who uh, collect all the timber from waste sites in Toronto and everything else from construction sites, and they repurpose it. Uh, I deal with another company in Vancouver who turn all that into uh, dull laminated timber 
um, you know, and you think it's possible to do, but it's uh, getting over the question of scale because we, we think things are small and dispersed. Is there a perception that stuff is not fit for purpose and that's why we can't reuse it, for example? Depend, depends yeah. on what it is. Yeah, it's a protectionist stance, yeah. quite, quite rightly in some yeah, yeah. cases. But we're not living in a world that's free of risk. Like, in fact, the alternative is far more risky to far more people. We've borrowed too much, I think, from a sort of, um, you know, suing culture of a culture of blame yeah. around um, what, what the failings were in the project rather than thinking about how can we just do it better. The amount of times I'm asked to go back through my emails and go whose fault was that and then what day was it? And something that the government can do to, to warrant some of this stuff where it's okay we accept there's a risk but it needs to happen. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's the flip side of that which is like if you remove those the kind of uh, legal requirements then in the current system we've still got which is maximising profit and growth uh, then you get the cowboy builders building rubbish yeah. and then just leaving because yeah. it's their responsibility. I, I don't think it's a progressive industry just at the moment. It's starting to become more progressive, but I think it is on the back foot a little bit. I think we're leaning a lot on legislation and there's a lot more activism in, um, you know, London-based groups. I think there is a leaning towards more of a business-as-usual approach with um, not not having the space to innovate and we've talked a lot about the, the sort of procurement challenges today around um, you know unwillingness to accept risk and I think in, in Scotland particularly in architecture there's a lot more SMEs than there might be in other places there's not a lot of big architects that can take on huge risks so we need to work with small companies and small businesses and try and understand how we can support one another in that. I spent about an hour and a half very frustratedly uh, looking for a website that could list all the sustainable building materials. Zero Waste Scotland actually created a library of materials um, about 10 years ago. Um, they is on the Architecture and Design Scotland website and it's now in Glasgow City College. They keep it in reception so that it can be viewed by everyone and yeah, yeah that is, as far as I know what they told us in December is they keep it as up to date as they can because they're also going through the train the trainer and train the student process mm -hmm. so that is what they physically use. Most of you are aware of the massive challenges in the construction industry. Half of landfill around the world, massive terrible impacts. We can reprocess, so we had a massive shredder on site um, any products can come back to us, we can shred them and they go back into our, our products up to about 30%. And it improves the products actually, which is good for us. And the last thing is we have biodegradable products, so products that can biodegrade on site or in, in a hot compost. Um, I work for Balfour BT Construction in Scotland and I head up supply chain development. The reason I was um, invited to this was just that I've been active quite a lot in particular with the uh, Circular Economy Bill for Scotland uh, uh, and, and um, I've also got a huge passion about doing the right thing from an environmental point of view and looking at how we can transform our industry. When I started out in my journey in, in, in working uh, for all these companies, climate action was not even thought about. And when I think back about some of the decisions that I was involved in, or made, they weren't maybe the right decisions in hindsight looking back given the climate emergency that we're in today. So I feel I need to try and help reverse some of those matters. Sometimes you just think, boy I'm overwhelmed by all this challenge. This challenge is just huge and by the way we've only got until 2045 to fix it. Well, actually, we've not. We've, we've, we're kind of in the zone now. We should be fixing it now. We, the whole process of starting to fix 2045 is now. Fife College, one of our um, main electrical suppliers of lighting, we sat with them and said, look, you're bringing a ton of cardboard, paper and plastic with your product. We need to find a better way of doing that. So we came up with a, a process where we got in a room with them. We digitised the pallet in a way that when it comes on site, Someone's got the digital device, the phone, scan it, and it tells them exactly where that has to be delivered to because that's where that is being fitted. And all the components required to fit those lights and controllers will be in the same pallet. And the pallet eliminated wood, plastic, cardboard, and even the uh, shrink wrap. 
we believe we can upscale this in a big way. Perception is the, the biggest one, and it, so it's maybe not presenting something as this is a recycled product, but, but in construction actually not mentioning that and just presenting a, a good product which is sound and will do do the job. There was a good idea of introducing uh, quotas um, uh, for re reuse or recycled materials into new buildings. I think we've done some of that in France. One of the things we can do is implement the polluter pays principle and that's been done uh, in a number of places and there's a good example in Holland where the suppliers are responsible for the whatever happens to their products at the end of their life. Uh, what's most important to me for delivering a sustainable future is, is working both in a decentralised sort of regional manner but also with a very much overarching common goal that should be country led um, but I fear we get too hung up sometimes on, on the, the problems, on the difficulties, on the regulations, on the roadblocks um, when we really need to be focusing on the, the positives, on the uh, things we can do within the current frameworks and then really leveraging uh, you know, a group like this is an ability to, to make some real change at the top. Um, if we really want to keep buildings rather than introducing new consultants, nightmares of consultation and counting, just move the tax levers and then the money will follow and buildings will be far more carefully evaluated and reused if people have to pay tax on knocking them down and get let off tax in terms of uh, um, reusing them. It's about stewardship and taking responsibility for our actions while protecting and advancing our industry. We all turned up here today because we want to make a difference. When trust and collaboration are held in equal measure, real transformation will be delivered. We will achieve what we need to achieve.